Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. My name is Tony, this is the 15 Minute Gamer, and welcome to iRacing. Well, more specifically, AI coaching in iRacing. Now, I'm new to the world of sim racing in general. I'm definitely a beginner. I've seen a few adverts here and there for coaching. I've watched a few videos on how to get better and how to get the corners and overtake. And, you know, this is a very competitive and tough hobby to get good in. You practice, you think you're good, you jump in an online race, and well, it certainly shows that you're not. I'm finding that out the hard way at the moment. Anyway, so this week, I saw an advert for AI Coaching via Driver61, who I believe is quite a legend in these parts. I've seen him talked about a lot on Reddit and stuff. This system is called Trophy, with an I, dot AI. It's a free download. All you got to do is fill a form in, and a few days later, you can download it on your PC and give it a go. So, the question now is, could AI, because I think I'll be able to help, help me, someone who is always a few seconds off the pace, get better and understand where I'm going wrong. So I've jumped in to the GR86 on the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park circuit to find out. I've driven eight laps of this circuit. My fastest time without AI was a 135.768. My mean time over the eight laps was a 136.753, which after doing some online races, is about where my pace normally is. So anyway, let's check out the AI. We're gonna jump on the website, I'll run through it with you, and then we're gonna look at the AI and what it can do. So this is the website here. I will put a link in the description as always. You just head on there, click get started, it's free. Fill out a form, you'll be on it. Right, so this is what it looks like. This is what it can show. It's gonna tell you um, where you can fix things, and then you can put an overlay on your screen which will tell you what to improve on. So next lap focus. I've not done this yet. This is why I'm recording this video now is before I jump on it. I just want to show what the website shows and then I'm going to jump in and give it a go and see how it runs. So you get live on track AI coaching. You get post session AI feedback. You get mistake analyzer. I guess mine's going to be terrible. And you get some programs as well. So it'll kind of um, show you how to trail break and stuff, which is really interesting. I've heard a lot of people say about trail breaking. So I do want to give that a go and see if it improves things. Um, it was just a simple download. Um, it took a couple of seconds to install. It wasn't hard. There's no setting up anything like that. I mean, look, you can even use it on Rocket League. <laughs> so I mean, it covers everywhere. Right, let's take a look at the program itself. Right, so here we are. You can see here, here's my eight laps. I did discount this lap because I crashed and it would have been stupid. It would have like messed up the whole thing. But yeah, there's all my laps and you can see here is the fastest one. When you click on it, it will load the analysis. It doesn't take too long at all. It will then start playing a video of your lap. So you can click on here and it can show you all the different corners. You can do it by um, in order or you can do it like by delta time. We'll do it in order just as we go through. Then you've got this video here, which you can play. You can also select the speeds you want to do it. So if you want to look at slow or fast, we'll put on one. Up here, you can set your brake and throttle. So obviously we can see just a lap without anything if we don't want to. We can see just via an expert or just me, or we can turn them both on. So let's press play and let's see. So we'll come up with the first one here. Let's speed up a little bit. You can see neither of us are putting your brake on. Yay, look at that. I'm an expert. <laughs> so far, so good. But here's our first point. Now, look at me. Now, straight away, I'm putting brake on here. You can see, putting quite a lot of brake on. The expert, no brake at all. They're flat out down there. So there's some time I'm, I can already gauge that that is where I'm losing time. Now, turn three, I usually find quite difficult, to be fair. Let's compare this. I'm putting on, I'd say we're breaking pretty much at the same time. But you can see here, I kind of go all on the break and then all off. Whereas this guy here, I don't know if this is what you call trail breaking. Um, as you can see there, they get off it gently. Like they're on, then there you go. You can see they're still breaking a little bit at that point to get around that corner. Whereas I'm, I'm not putting any more break input on there. So that's the first three corners. And I think, I'm quite happy with how I broke on turn three, to be fair. It wasn't that bad. 
And then this one up here, I mean, generally it's flat out, so neither of us break. Coming down to turn five, which I always find quite hard. You can see he breaks the AI. I don't mind calling the <laughs> But yeah, they break a little bit later than me. And again, I'm on solid, 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 solid and off. Whereas the AI again, you can see they're still breaking at this point. I mean, slowly, but they're still breaking. So I think one thing looking at this, I really need to learn is that I need to learn to control the breaking a bit better. And actually, once I've started slowing down, come off it a little bit. Like I can see that just from looking at that graph which is fantastic, right? These are just the S, these are coming up the S's. So we can see here, I'm no break at all. They've put a tiny little bit of break on. So I would say maybe a little bit of break there. This one here, again, I'm just on off <laughs> there, a little bit break more. And then this one, I'm breaking way harder compared to them. So yeah, there's a few things I can do there. Now you can also knock them off and put throttle on. And again, you can see that's them and um, this one. So again, look how smooth they are. Whereas I'm off, on, off, on, off, on. They're kind of just holding it a little bit. I can see that straight away. And again, moving up to this corner too. I'm off, on, off, on. They're holding it, holding it, holding it, and then straight on again. This one. Again, I'm off on. I would say not too dissimilar there, though. They've got a bit more blipping around, but yeah, I would say, I would say I'm all right on that one. So obviously if we head down to turn five, because turn five was one we looked at before. And you can see here, I'm fully on. I'm off, I'm off, I'm off, I'm off. They're blipping around again, again. They're holding the brake and accelerating at the same time. So you can instantly see the differences. Now, what is also cool is if you click on a corner, a moss corner, it tells you exactly what to do. So delay your throttle application to improve the control. We've got improper trail braking as the poor car control is on turn five, and I'm shifting up too early, which sacrifices power and acceleration. So there are the three things I'm doing wrong there. So if we click back and we have a look at, um, let's go to the S's. So I'm applying too much brake pressure can disrupt your trail braking. Understeer is affecting your car and control. Moderate understeer, understeer is impacting your lap time. Solid braking, but I'm braking a little bit too hard. Again, that's totally fine. And yeah, just to show it's there. I mean, this one's got quite a few issues. <laughs> So I'm one gear higher than I should be, so I should be dropping the gear when I get there. And then I can see, oh, this is embarrassing, <laughs> an assessment of it. So I can see front wheels are starting to skid. I've got a C in trail brake. I'm an F for throttle release. Throttle application, I'm a D. So yeah, pretty bad. Pretty bad. But you can do that for every single corner. So if I want to go to turn one, assessment, you can see that it's got a bit better. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. I can then analyze the lap. And then what I can do is launch the overlay. Now this is going to put an overlay on my screen and this is going to tell me how to drive better as I drive the lap. Now, I'm now going to go and drive eight laps and let's see if I can bring that medium time down or if I'm going to stay the same or am I going to get worse? I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's leaving the comments below. What do you think? Do you think I'm going to get better? Do you think I'm not? Do you think I need more than eight laps? I don't know. I'm just going to put eight laps on and we'll see what happens. All right, I'll be back. So how the overlays work in game, you can have as many as you want and you can do brakes, throttle, steering and gears. And then you put them in the top of your screen or wherever you want to place them, you can move them around. You can also put tones on. So you'll notice during this video, I have a tone on for when I should brake. Now on the game I was playing, I actually had the left hand side set to throttle. So yeah, I had it set up as the wrong overlay, unfortunately. So I've just realized it says brakes and brakes, but I did have throttle on the other side. And then as you go, it just follows the bar and then it resets at the end of every single lap. Now there was a lot more on the website. I couldn't find where that is. It didn't coach me as I went through. It didn't say like, do this, do this and do that. I don't know if that's a different game or that's coming later or you got to pay for it or whatever. But what you get on screen is what I had.
on iRacing. Right guys, so I've just come back from doing eight laps. They didn't all go successful. I must admit, following the break in and acceleration point, I kept getting turn five really wrong. I don't know why. However, I did manage five good laps. Unfortunately, I didn't have much time to try this out in. Right, so now that I've organized it by lap time, four out of them, six or seven laps I did were quicker than I managed earlier, all within the 135s, as you can see. So 135, 367 was my quickest lap. Earlier, my quickest lap was a 135, 768. So that's what, almost half a second difference. But most importantly, the mean average time. So I did eight laps earlier. I did five laps on this one. The difference on average was one 0.1 seconds quicker over that testing session. So if you imagine that over a course of a race, times that by five, that could be quite a big difference per lap in a race. Um, I must admit, I did find it a bit hard at first to get used to it and how it was telling you how to work. But can AI make you better? Yeah. <laughs> how long did that take? That's taken me an hour. And that was bearing in mind I was recording this video as well. So within an hour, I've knocked um, that time, I've knocked half a second. I'm sure if I kept going, I could have got more and more and more of that. I was just looking at throttle and braking, you know, I would look at steering inputs and I would look at everything else and keep analyzing to get that down to where I was going right and wrong. Now, if we take a look at my assessment, look at that, I've gone, <laughs> look at that BB. I mean, there's still some terrible stuff, but yeah, look at that improvement from what we had before quite impressive i'm really really happy with that let's look i mean just have a look a c b b f f d d c d e f all right let's go and have a look at that one before then so let's load up the analysis of one of my laps last time and there we go look b c b d f f way worse i got better ai does work <laughs> so let's have a look with breaking at this fastest lap so i'm going to press play you can see here last time i've done a bit of breaking absolutely nothing now turn to the exact same i used throttle control all the way moving into turn three broke too early and too hard as you can see this time could probably do a break and a little bit harder a little bit quicker but you can see breaking wise a lot more in that kind of range like way better than it was um and i sort of keeled off a little bit wrong just going straight off but yeah all good Turn four, no brakes. Let's skip along to turn five. Turn five. Now, I'm going to admit I found turn five very difficult to get right. As you can see, you really brake hard, and then you come off it and off a little bit, off a little bit, off a little bit, off a little bit. That might be easier on load cell pedals. On mine, not so easy. So I kept crashing off. But as you can see, I was hard on the brakes, down. But I came off the brakes pretty close to where I needed to be. And then we'll go up there to the S's. Now, if we look at the S's, braking wise, yeah, pretty much. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a little bit of braking, not much going on. They blip the braking a little bit more. I do a little bit. This one here, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, again, just maybe if I could, but again, my brake pedals on a load cell might be easier. But you can see that could came off. In the final turn, brake wise, I mean, they put about 10% in, I put about 25% in. But again, that's pretty good compared to what it was. I think you'll agree. Uh, Throttle-wise was pretty similar. It was a lot better than how it was previously. 
But I hope just as a quick video, that was informative. So yeah, if you want to check this out for yourself, remember it's free to get started. Let me know what your experience was. Did you get better? Did you get some faster times? Are you enjoying it? Are you finding it hard to use? And let me know below. Comment, comment, comment. Keep it going and let's see what this can do. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you all later. Goodbye.